Hello my friends and channel subscribers, Greg here from Brisbane, Australia with another uncut, unedited, no bull video. Today's video, I would like you to walk with me through Kia Connect. So Kia introduced recently Kia Connect in the premium models of, the, of some of their cars and my car is Kia Nero EV. Your Kia Connect may look the same, may look different, but I think as a software, the principles are the same. So what I would like to do, this video is unscripted, uncut, I may make mistakes, may name things inappropriately, but the whole idea mm. is to walk through what I see on the screen and debate together whether it's good, bad, ugly, and for people that don't have Kia, to kind of demonstrate what they... Uh, what kind of controls they would have if they choose to go with more premium Kia and engage with um, Kia Connect. So every country is different. In Australia, Kia Connect powered by Optus. So when you buy your car, uh, Optus SIM card will be installed in your Kia, the totally uh, transparent process. And when you get it, you pay your phone with your Kia. And uh, to be honest, I didn't have any spot so far where my, my card did not work. Maybe it's because of the amplifier or maybe because antenna is high up. Even in the basement, I always had connection to my Kia Nero. So when we come to the front page, what we can see here, it's a, a card that you're monitoring and you can assign a couple of cars if you got a couple of them in a software but uh, I've got uh, Kia Nero EV and in Australia only GT line would have uh, Kia Connect installed so currently oh, actually let's authenticate oh starting control no I don't want to do this uh, so I will cancel this accidentally press and start climate control, which I don't want to do. I will cancel it in a second. Uh, actually, I won't cancel it. Let it run. Uh, but the Kia park elsewhere. And uh, what I see here is it's not plugged in at the moment. The actually cancel climate control. Climate control activated. Uh, I probably will deactivated in some stage um, let me see if I can do it here from controls let me see if I can actually deactivate it as we speak right now now it's a uh, stop climate control okay great so sorry about this I accidentally pressed on it and it will chew uh, a lot of battery and I don't want that mm -hmm. so let's go back um, to the home screen so at the moment it's reporting on 511 kilometers left and that's because I started climate control. It should report more than that. Let's uh, quickly uh, refresh it. Uh, so let's see, that's the range. So it's quickly refreshing it. Uh, so at the moment range is 521Ks and i will show you battery status later on so on the front page you got uh, uh, the car that you're monitoring uh, it shows that it's unplugged that means um, it's not plugged into charging right now it showed that i'm connected to the vehicle 521 k's left to drive and mind you those controls are kind of um, shortcut so we have more controls later on but, um, and you can actually rearrange them. So for example, with vehicle control and you can go into more and it basically throws you into control tab, which I don't wanna go to. I just wanna show you what you quickly can do from a front page. So you've got vehicle control, which if you accidentally did not lock it, a car will let you know that you didn't lock your car and it will uh, uh, send you a message and you can actually lock remotely, which is great. Or if someone near your car and you would like um, to unlock, someone put uh, stuff in and then lock again, you can do it as well. Um, and you also can start climate control. And when I say climate control in Australia and Brisbane, uh, I don't imagine myself warming up the car. But so many times I already started 
uh, cooling before coming in and I really appreciate it because if you start a couple of minutes before you get in the car is nice and cold in the middle of the summer when usually you get in the car it's like between 60 to 80 degrees not great so starting climate controlled remotely is amazing so we've got lock climate control unlock and we've got vehicle status it's clearly says it's unlocked right now yes it is in my garage and um I've got bad habit of not locking my car in the garage. Mind you, the car is unlocked, but keys are not there. All right, so, and as you see, climate control, uh, is, uh, we can turn off and we can, uh, and the rest of the car is actually closed. That means boot is closed, the front or front uh, part of the car is closed and sunroof closed as well. That's where car park, you can define where you are parking your car. You can register office. Um, you can put calendar and then you got uh, personal service where you can link car to your calendar it's really good because it's connected to your navigation can help you with navigation and uh, charging on the way if you're navigating too far away user profile settings uh, we go there soon but um, basically I think uh, it's in a more section at the bottom um, let's go quickly there and we come back so user settings, you got profile backup. I highly recommend backing it up. And the reason is that because uh, after you configured everything here, if you break your phone or lose it, uh, the profile stored here and you may wish to uh, restore or server crashes and you need to restore. Um, and that's to do with everything. That's the sound, navigation, uh, warnings, uh, literally safety, everything. We will go through things soon. But I back it up two times. Actually, back up profile only when I make changes. So as you can see, I back it up on 8th of March and 10th of March, which is all right. And you can easily create backup, right? Let's get out of there. So you've got profile image, which, uh, you know, I'll put picture of uh, my favorite picture of me and my uh, little boy, which is doesn't matter. Vehicle settings. This is where most of the settings are. So let's quickly have a look. So whatever you can configure through your dash, you can configure here. And I won't go through everything, but you can see the sound, voice, theme, date, buttons. You can rearrange buttons, general settings, vehicle settings, navigation settings. So basically everything that is in a car, you can configure through here. So let's quickly look what's inside. Sound settings. So you got premium sound which is basically how uh, electronics enhance your sound. I think premium sound uh, only available in uh, upper trims, which is in Australia, it's a GT line. In Australia, we've got only two trims. I think America got four trims and Europe may have four or three trim trims. So in Australia, we've got a uh, basic car without premium sound and this version of car, which is GT line with the premium sound. So you can, uh, I like normal sound, so I put just normal there. Uh, then you got driving guidance. And here you can uh, uh, override your phone. You can uh, prioritize the navigation, mute things. So it's part of navigation. Then you got uh, radio noise control. I uh, put mild noise reduction, so it's all right. And you got driving safety priority and reverse warning priority. So, um, I did not like reverse warning priority. The reason is that like, let's say you play in the radio and you start reversing, it's getting quieter. I don't know, I didn't like it. So anyway, I've got mid noise reduction and that's it for me. And by the way, I'm not here to justify my settings. I just to, would like to walk you through what you can expect from uh, um, Kia Connect. So theme and layout settings. Uh, there's a screen uh, saver you can have um, on a big, big screen. So Mikey has two 12 inch screens that molded in one, like almost taking half car. Um, and I don't think the screen saver is uh, belong in there. So uh, extend rear camera use. I did not find that feature uh, useful. That means you start driving and you see, still can see what's behind you. You can tick that if you like it. I prefer when I'm in drive, see what's in front of me. And if I would like to see camera, I press button inside the cabin. But you can do it here. 
Um, and you can tick here if you would like infotainment system remains on uh, when vehicle turn off. If you like listening to music or whatever, when you're waiting for things, you can tick there as well. So um, date time setting, I think it's a usual format, like a 24 hour format. Um, and auto time setting, I think it's actually uh, gets it from the SIM card. Daylight saving time, um, uh, we're slightly unlucky here in Queensland. It's a huge debate. I don't want to be part of it, but we don't have daylight saving. So I don't want to confuse car with the neighboring state times and I untick it. We don't have uh, daylight savings here, but if you would like your time to be changed when da daylight saving change, you need to tick it and then take all the definition from your SIM card insert so it gets from your uh, cell provider and I like 24 hour format. All right, let's go big button settings. So uh, button settings is funny because we've got one panel that serves two purposes. One is uh, a radio and uh, uh, and map and other one is actually no, it's a different one. Actually, I've got no idea what it is, uh, but because I'm not using normal map, I'm using uh, Android Auto, and my map is an Android Auto. I've got no idea what it is, so I left it default. Don't want to stay here anymore, but you can see what you see, and if it's interest of you, you can change here what you like. Um, now, we've got general settings. General settings is in, uh, uh, language. I'm quite interested, like, there's a choice between English and I think it's Korean, because the car is Korean, and Radio media off at vehicle startup. Um, I look, I like getting in the car and getting radio working straight away. I didn't turn it off. And display media change notifications. That means if anything will be plugged in or uh, not plugged in, um, it will show here. And units, I believe, it's uh, Celsius for temperature. I like kilometers and hour as a consumption unit because kilowatts mean, uh, mean nothing to me. I like understand how many kilowatts I consume in 100 kilometers. It's almost like a fuel. And uh, anyway, it suits me uh, well. Tire pressure unit. Uh, I like it on PSI. And by the way, yes, uh, the premium trim and uh, Kia Nira EV have a, a tire pressure monitoring system. I'm not sure how it works, but that's video not about this. It does show you tire pressures and that's actually quite cool because it changes as you drive because when wheels are warming up as temperature uh, get higher it expands and you can see the uh, pr tire pressure rises so it fluctuates uh, two to three psi sometimes that's amazing to see that's cool so you can define here what you'd like to see in a kilo pascals or bars i like in psi uh, let's go further. That's enough of general settings. Uh, we can go into uh, vehicle settings. So uh, drive mode. This is where uh, Mikey has um, a couple of different controls. Uh, it's eco mode climbing control. I don't really like it. I really like, like for example, if you'd like to save on air conditioner, I'll save it within a cabin. I don't want um, my controls to decide for me how strong or weak it will be. I will change it on the fly. So I did not tick that. Then you've got uh, cluster. So you can uh, content selection. Let's press this. So uh, it basically shows you things. You can um, choose messages that appear or disappear. So wiper and light display, cool, I've got it. And IC road warning. Look uh, where I am, it's almost impossible, but I just left it tick because it's not bothering me. Uh, welcome sound, look, um, the key already has enough sounds. I unticked it because any extra sound would be too much for me. And by the way, it's probably the most uh, soundy or talkative car I ever driven. All right, let's do go climate. Uh, so here you can control. Uh, uh, so it's funny, as car drives, it actually can engage or disengage by itself internal or external air circulation. So what we've got here is activates by itself depends how you uh, uh, take this uh, thing. So if you decided to use your uh, washer fluid and it's smelly, it's immediately would activate it internal circulation so you won't smell it. Or when you're in a tunnel, I think it also goes um, 
into school zones that kind of uh, self circulate. Anyway, it's a pretty clever car what they did there. So auto dehumidify, that's pretty cool. So um, if it detects too much humidity and fogs up windows, it would do by itself. That's great. We take it on and defrost uh, defog. That's the same thing, I guess, just in reverse. So same, I don't want to debate it, but you can choose it here. Now, uh, sit. So uh, warm and ventilating, uh, ventilated features. So uh, this is where I can uh, automate your uh, steering wheel warmer. Look where I am. Actually, would like to cool it, not to warm up. But uh, you can automate your warming features. I understand the cold climate that's crucial. So that's pretty cool. Ticket if you need. Um, now we've got. We've got that was seat right before. Yep. And uh, now lights. So I really use a lot uh, half uh, indicator press, which basically, you know, if you turn indicator on, you need to turn it off or um, uh, kind of engage your steering wheel to go opposite direction. If you would like just to indicate a number of flashes, uh, that's what uh, this setting is for. If I slightly touch it, it goes into three, five or seven flushes. I think three is too little, uh, seven is too long, five flushes here. And headlight timeout, basically, when you get out of the car and use it a lot, the lights still on so you can see where you're going and in 15 seconds they will turn off. And high beam assist, it's fantastic. You engage in high beam, if it spot cars in front of you, it will turn to low beam and back to high beam again. I love it. You can see road clearly and it's protecting other drivers. That's awesome. Now, door. Uh, so, auto lock. I love this feature, especially I think it's not relevant much to Australia because we're a safe country, but maybe in unsafe countries it's pretty cool when you start driving. It's auto lock the whole car and unlock. I put it. Uh, uh, it unlocks when I put in a parking. So, for example, when I'm picking up my child, I stop the pickup zone, I, I, I shift my car to park, and it unlocks car so he can get in. Awesome feature. I like that automation. Uh, convenience. So, you've got wireless charging system. Oh, look, I'm not using it. Uh, and um, you can automate your rear wiper, which is pretty cool. Uh, when you're using front wiper, it will uh, activate the rear ones. And if you don't, it will disable it. That's actually, you know what? I never thought of those automations until I start using them. I thought it's a gimmick. It's actually so much of useful stuff here. So this is your vehicle settings. You've got navigation settings, so I don't want to go much into these details. I would like to just uh, let you know that those navigation settings are not going to be enabled if you're using uh, Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. And because I'm using Android Auto, I'm not using native navigation, so uh, I can quickly go through um, uh, those uh, uh, things here but what i'd like to say i've got no comment on them because i'm not using native navigation so let's look display uh okay it shows your speed points of interest that's cool uh guidance uh guidance you got interval basically you're setting up the guidance here sorry for quickly rushing through because i've got no experience and uh, i cannot comment on alerts actually that's pretty cool this is where Majority of people getting stuck, they don't like key or safety alerts. It alerts you about schools, speeds and everything. So you can actually define where and when it reminds you. So I don't want to remind you about road key or railroad crossing. I can see clearly black spots, all of that. Uh, but it does remind me of school zones because school zone goes from any speed that mark on the road to 40 during the school time. So that's actually a mark and it's overpowers Android Auto. It actually comes up on display on the background. So that's pretty cool. And at night time, I don't want to remind about anything, especially school zones. So uh, you can define what uh, Kia tells you at daytime and nighttime. And I believe somewhere later it will be scheduled what is daytime means to you and what nighttime. Now you've got those alerts, you've got map. So I guess, you know, it's a lot of different ways you can um, 
change and modify map again i never been here before and i don't care because i never use native map but it's pretty cool and it's getting updated and if you're not android play android auto or apple carplay user that's pretty cool uh, to have it here uh, configured automated features so yeah all right so if you're using map you can automate a couple of features but i don't do that but you can clearly see you can uh, further automate your map functions uh right so device connection settings so okay you've got privacy more i don't know so if you if you like uber driver or or just uh, have people that should not see things on the screen you can actually control um what comes up on the screen so it's a privacy mode uh, so uh, you can edit predefined messages like reply or reject messages so it will be helpful uh phone projection settings so android auto so you can enable or disable it in case you don't want android auto to come up but you're connecting your phone by cable um now this is really important bit use split screen on android auto screen if you update to latest version of android auto and latest version of the key entertainment infotainment system you actually can use the beautiful 12 inch screen for everything so if you like me like using ways on the whole 12 inch screen you need to untick that box so if you put uh, use split screen uh, you will have other information on that screen so that's beautiful that you can untick it and have your uh, ways or uh, your map of choice like cgic or whatever you're using on a full screen that's beautiful so that is it here let's go back to home now we can use controls that's the second tab so what we can do with the car remotely you can lock it you can start climate control you can unlock it stop climate control the beauty is you could plug it in your uh, choice of your charger and you can stop it manually and start it manually. So let's say you're preserving your battery and you're charging only between 20 to 80%. You can define it or you can supervise it and do it from here. Let's say, you know, you're traveling overseas and, you know, it's sunny day at your place and you can connect to socket. You can start charging it, but you don't want car to charge if it's not sunny um, if you'd like to maximize your solar panels, I don't know. I found it's beautiful that give you uh, option for automation as well as you can start and stop charging on demand. Now you can flash lights uh, or start light. Uh, let's say you know you would like to see where you're going before you approach the car. You start light here or you spotted intruder and you would like to scare them or spook them. You can use light and horn so here you go climate setting so um if you would demiss your heating if you're in a hot in a cold climate that's uh would be here i don't do any of that because i'm in a, in a very hot climate i need to cool down the car but that's really good for people that need to um clean uh, windscreen mirrors uh, and have a steering wheel nice and warm for me i just define 20 degrees so whatever temperature outside i like it to be a little bit cooler because by the time i open boot um, get my stuff in open doors getting passengers in the temperature will be nice and cozy 22 24 degrees so yes i start my climate settings uh at 20 degrees like 10 to 15 minutes before i get in the car so now it's a funny one okay you can set schedule for climate control so every time you do something uh, that changes the uh, setting, you need to authenticate. So it communicates to the car. And here we're setting a schedule for climate control. Uh, and this is here you can actually get your scheduling done. And I don't want any of that. So I'm basically coming back to where I was before uh now you've got status right so this is the current status of the car so current range of my car 521 case and it's 95 percent charge i know make many people unhappy here yes i do charge to 100 percent um 
I do believe if battery is supposed to be uh, useful between 0 to 100%, I would charge at that. And it also gives me convenience of 550 kilometers, which is phenomenal for this little car. So, uh, battery level 95%, and if you click on that uh, question mark, it will show you that is uh, uh, conditioning when you're going to fast charger and normal when you're not going to fast charger, which is great. Uh, you can put schedule charging again. You can schedule it. You can start stop yourself and get schedule climate control. Uh, it tells me the car is unlocked and climate controls as they stand right now. So climate control off, uh, the steering wheel heating off, the, the front screen heating off, the back screen heating off, and the mirrors heating off. So uh, the others is my uh, sunroof close, my boot close, my front close, the battery is good, and the lights are normal. So here we can click on uh, vehicle health report, and as you can see, uh, it's a pretty new car, only driven uh, almost 1200 kilometers. And it tells me how driving all systems are okay. That's a bit of a gimmick, but interesting to know. Now, map, I guess nothing here, but uh, it can help you with the park and shopping. I never been here before, not interested. So, you've got here pretty much what we already entered through shortcuts. But a couple of more things that um, I think important to know. So account settings, this is here. You can uh, uh, use it for uh, define your account and a uh, like couple of private settings. Uh, now, vehicle settings. So it's your subscription level in Australia. If you buy uh, top trims, your subscription runs from the moment you purchase the car until end of warranty for me it's until uh, March 2030 you can share this car or you can share settings and you can change profile I don't want to go in the personal things here but all personal information you can be you can define here now vehicle selection so uh, that's a vehicle under my name uh, you can find, uh, you can add other vehicles, you've got fleet, I think it's pretty good. So up settings, uh, you know, I like authenticate by uh, biometrics, push notifications are awesome because if I don't lock, didn't lock the car, it will notify me, it actually will notify me of everything. Also, if I somewhere and I'm charging and vehicle uh, charge 100%, it will let me know that vehicle is charged. Or if I define, let's say 80%, it tells me that uh, it's reached my 80% and disconnected. So you've got a lot of notifications and uh, I love them also. I actually uh, got them all enabled. Now you've got uh, uh, biometric identification. That's what I like doing. And you've got all other things that you would like uh, to um, do an application. That's quite cool. So my trips, this is where I love it, but I had a little bit more expectations. So uh, I thought this car can be used as almost like a tracker. So yes, it tells you um, that you're driven 18 minutes, 10 kilometers, every speed, top speed. But you cannot, for some reason, see map of where you're driven. And that's pretty silly because this application does have a map. It controls every single aspect of where, of where you're going and, and looking what you're doing. But yet it doesn't show you map. I'm slightly upset about this. But you can see, uh, let's say, multiple trips here in one day. And you can see statistics. I wish they would actually plot your journey as a uh, part of this like let's say little button say look at your journey and if you caught like uh, speeding you can prove that you did not speed because you can see the whole journey in front of you anyway i think they may improve it in a later uh editions so those are my trips you've got alert settings uh, and alert services let's see what's in there uh look it's i think uh, it's to do with uh theft and if you lend in car to your friends or uh, kids you can put speed alerts uh, 
and time alerts and all that i i use this car privately so but it's really handy to have that uh, amount of supervision uh okay uh let's do following okay ev service i think that's a pretty cool one so that's what i was talking about you can set your uh charging limits so this way you can charge car to 70 80 90 percent i set it to 100 percent and both you can actually if you if you do dc charger and you're really already charging fast and you'd like to preserve your battery that's that's a good idea i don't use dc charges all my charges are ac and i believe if you're charging slow um, I'm not saying charging to 100% is good, but it's not bad and damaging as charging on DC fast charger until 100. Anyway, personal opinion. Uh, then you've got energy consumption. That is actually pretty cool. Um, so you've got all statistics of power consumption and what you've been driven. I'm pretty impressed by this car. It has 60 volt, 64 kilowatt battery that drives me around 550 Ks in one charge. It's phenomenal. The average battery consumption, uh, it says 12.19 kilowatt. That would be right close to 11 to 13. Um, and that's beautiful. So at 13 kilowatts, uh, our the battery consumption so if you're driving let's say 100 kilometers right and speed is 100 kilometers an hour so for 12 kilowatts you're achieving 100 kilometers so if your battery is 64 kilowatts you can calculate it's definitely more than 500 kilometers so i don't have any range anxiety but also it's lovely to see statistics look at that statistic so recuperation it's your regenerative braking so my regime is breaking almost half of my driving. So that energy that petrol and diesel cars waste as a braking, uh, kinetic braking capacity, I'm getting that energy back into battery. So because this car has one pedal driving or I pedal drive, what they call it, uh, I actually don't use brakes at all. That is amazing. I look at this. It's just uh, not half, but... Uh, more than third of my energy uh, got from uh, from a recuperation so it's a back into battery and doesn't cost me any money but put fuel back into car that's beautiful the statistic is phenomenal so and charging completion alarm that's what i like so uh when it completes charging it's a new push notification which is great you know um it's a great feature let's say let's see what uh, what it will come up with <sighs> so yep so that's beautiful so if you're planning your trip let's say in a supermarket and you would like to go as soon as the car charge and you know you uh, walk into cars 10 20 30 minutes you can actually get alarm uh, that time before and as you arrive the car will be charged to exact your charging so it's not to 100% if let's say you define 80% charging it will notify you 10 20 or 30 minutes before you arrive that's just amazing I never use it but it's a beautiful feature right there all right so uh, that is it there's a, a lot more like uh, information as about application and and connect to customer service and all that and mind you look at this all of that was given in a version one so it's a first stable version of application i'm not saying it's working perfectly but considering how feature rich it is i think it's pretty awesome to have something like that free of charge for seven years from kia not tesla not any other brand yes they copy i think the tesla's idea but to be honest um no one here charging you for sim no one here charging for this service you getting as part of top trim for seven years awesome 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 so here we are thank you so much for watching greg from brisbane australia until next time